Sensei. We're about to talk to one of the most exciting, most fascinating young authors of the region. I'm sure this is going to be a bestseller. From your area, Mr. David Clark. This, as I read it, was exciting, romantic. What moved you to do this story? Well, it, was, it started from my love from the streets, and then a romantic love when I found the female that captured my heart. Captured your heart. More than that, ladies and gentlemen, if you've ever been in love, read this story. When he talks about captured his heart, people talk about the heart being the seat of motivation. It moves us to do what it is that we do. This young lady had this young man as though he was, as you put in your story, an alter ego. Where did you get this idea? Well, it came from, I grew up, and um, my first love was the streets. Hmm. Everything you start seeing and hearing, it just wraps you up in the palm of his hands. But, you know, it was like a fictitious love. Hmm. The streets captured me, mm -hmm. and, and the glory, and the glitter, and the glamour, but it wasn't real. You know, you, you know David, you called it a fictitious love. Uh, many young people today don't realize the lack of substance, because the glamour and glitter, just as you put it, grabs them. But what helped you to be able to see this? What, why did you get there? Through trials and tribulations, John. They say when there's happiness, I mean, then there's pain. Mm -hmm. Anything that you love, sometimes you go through certain moments where there's going to be pain and you have to get over it. So when I noticed that the streets wasn't good for me by being shot, mm -hmm. going to jail, mm -hmm. I love something that was never going to love me back. You know, I'm glad you said that because I was going to ask you, talk a little bit about uh, be before you met this incredible young lady. First of all, I wish you real. Ah, that's something y'all got to read and see. Now, now, David, I got to ask this question because I'm sure the readers of your book will wonder, what was it in the streets that made you feel such an incredible love? It's like a romance. Talk to me about that. I'm glad you asked that. There are so many romances in the street. Number one, money. It's easy to say money is the root of all evil when you're broke. So David, uh, for our audience, what you're saying is the streets appear to provide uh, a remedy for you. Now, and we know ultimately it wasn't real. And so many of our young people get caught up in that. But your story talks about a conflict that so many people who have their good versus evil, and in your case, as we talk about an alter ego, it was an other you. Tell me a little bit about that struggle. That was another good question. No Ordinary Love takes my readers through right and wrong, good and bad, love, sex, violence, and peace. You know, in the story, you talk about some characters that are really important. One by the name of Eli. Now, to you in the audience, I want y'all to hear this. Because I think you can really relate to him. He was a movie star in the hood. He was getting money. Everywhere he went, he had 10 stacks in his pocket or better. Fat style clothes on, $300 glasses, rings, the fattest cars, the newest cars. He would switch cars like he was switching his drawers every day. Everybody who knew him wanted to rub elbows with him. Who wouldn't want to know a dude with money? So oftentimes life presents us with a dilemma. And no ordinary love gets us the opportunity to look at a dilemma the same. In the story, you talk about a, an incredible romance that is real. A young lady, I believe her name is Jasmine. Where was she from? And how did the two characters in your story view her? Jasmine was the type of girl who every brother loved, every mother was proud of, and every father protected. Eli looked at her like a fresh piece of meat. You know how you see that girl? She got it all. Beautiful long hair, nice shape, hour shaped glass body. He wanted the boner. David, on the other hand, 
he loved her. It was like love at first sight. He liked everything about her. The way she walked, talked, the sound of her voice. I'm giving you too much. You're going to have to read the book. No Ordinary Love.